The fifth episode begins in 1998, where we see that Ahmad and Astuti are in an affair now and she is afraid that someone will tell Rima. Ahmad says sooner or later, Rima will know anyway, but he is just regretting the fact that his biggest investor is Rima's best friend. Once he signs the investment contract, he will file for divorce. Back to the present, Astuti again feels something crawling inside her head that gives her a headache and we see cockroaches coming out of her head. She starts pouring nail polish remover on her head and Woolen is shocked to see this. Astuti says with this, those cockroaches won't bother her anymore and Woolen tries to stop her, but Astuti tells her to let her go. Soon after, Woolen gets terrified seeing cockroaches coming out of her head. Later, Essa visits their home and Woolen says she can't stop thinking about what just happened. Wisnu says they can never use logic in this kind of matter. Essa says this whole thing doesn't make any sense, but this is really happening and the only way to find a way out is to believe. They then decide to watch the video again to find more clues, and Woolen finds that Astuti and Ahmad had known each other when he was still married to Rima, which means he had an affair with Astuti and got her pregnant with Woolen, and this is enough motive for Rima to hold a grudge against them. Woolen says even if it's the case, why it's now. Essa suggests they will directly ask Rima what happened 20 years ago. Later, Rina with Harna visits Woolen's house, and he tells her that they are not here to hurt her, but to help her. Harna explains why they did the things they did. It all started at the funeral of Reno's father. He saw a dark being lurking around her father, and what he has been looking for is an item called a knot. It's a vessel for black magic cast by the grudging people. For them to launch an attack, the knot needs to be planted near the target. He asks them if they ever hear any loud thud on the roof. Wisnu says yes, and Harna tells him that's when a djinn dropped the knot. Essa says last night he saw him plant something outside this house, to which Harna says that was a protective amulet to repel the curse. He then performs some kind of ritual, and during this, we see that Woolen still does not believe in black magic. He uses a ball to locate the knot, and as it begins rolling, Woolen also gets shocked to see it. The ball rolls to a photo on a wall and falls down, and when Wisnu removes the photo, they find a stain behind it. Harna then takes out a packet from inside the wall, from inside which an egg is found in which some spells are written. Suddenly that egg starts shaking and falls from Harna's hand and many cockroaches come out from inside it. Together they start killing those cockroaches by crushing them with their feet, and in the meanwhile, Astuti comes down hearing the commotion. Later, Harna tells Essa that even though Astuti looks better, they still have work to do. Whoever sent this is still out there, and he wants to use the remaining of this knot to track down the shaman. The next day, Wisnu and Woolen notice that their mother is strangely eating too much food today. Later, she checks about black magic on the internet and then calls Essa to ask him if he can come with her to Rima's house tomorrow. Now the next day, on the way to Rima's house, Woolen says that day she was not able to understand how that thing got inside her house's wall. But she can at least hope to get a logical answer from Rima and why her parents lied about their marriage. Meanwhile, Harna performs a ritual to leave his physical body and will send his carrying jinn to where the knot came from. Reno asks him if could he come along, to which he says he better not as it's too dangerous, but Reno requests him as he needs to know exactly what this is all about. Harna agrees and continues the ritual using the knot they found in Woolen's house. He hands him over a piece of knot and asks him to close his fist and not let it go. Soon after, they see a house in a village and a woman sitting in there, but she feels their presence, causing Harna and Reno to come back. Harna tells him that he knows the shaman's location and they have to let Woolen know as soon as possible. He then checks his hand, and they find that the piece of knot is not in there, and we see that Shaman finds that piece in her house. Back in 1998, we see Rima and Ahmad in a hospital in Jakarta, and here we learn that she is fighting cancer. Here Essa and Woolen reach Rima's house, and they find a man entering in there. Now when they both sneak in, they find Rima and that man indulging in some ritual, and only then do they get scared seeing a dog behind them. Essa tries to calm the dog but it attacks and bites his hand, and hearing the commotion, Rima comes out and tells her dog Darko to stop. She then brings them in, and while Woolen bandages Essa's wound, Rima says they two make a good couple, to which Woolen tells her they are not, and that Essa is Bondin's son. Rima says she knows Bondin, and asks him how is he doing. Only then Anam comes there, and says he will come back next week at the same time. After he leaves, Essa tells her that his dad passed away. Hearing this, Rima says that the last thing she remembers is that both their fathers worked in the same company in Banyuwangi. Essa asks her how long has Anam been treating her, to which she says hasn't even been a month. Wulan says they are here to clarify something, and she just wanted to ask her before her parents got married what exactly happened. Rima tells her that her marriage with Ahmed started crumbling down when she was diagnosed with cancer, and he had to move to Banyuwangi to build his business with Bondin where he meet Astuti. When he was divorcing her, he said that Astuti was his true love. She apologizes that she couldn't come to Ahmad's funeral, as she was sick at the time. She says she knows that her father's death made no sense, 
and she really wants to help her, but what could she do? She forgave her father long ago, and for the rest of her life, she doesn't want to live with a grudge. They then leave there, and Wulan says she doesn't know Rima too well, but she is sure she was telling the truth. She tells him Reno left so many missed calls, and that he wants to see them urgently. Meanwhile, Reno and Harna hear a thud sound from the top of his house, and Harna tells him that they know, as they left a trace. Only then does Harna hear some noise and feels someone's presence there, and suddenly something attacks him. He pukes blood and falls down, and when Reno tries to help him, he gets stuck. Harna tells him don't be scared, or it will get more powerful. The invisible entity then begins attacking Reno and breaks his hands, and then his leg, and then finally kills him by twisting his neck. Now when Essa and Wulan reach Reno's house, they see hospital staff bringing an unconscious Harna out, and then they get shocked to see Reno's dead body there. Later, she calls the hospital and asks the nurse to call her when Harna wakes up. Essa says that after talking to Auntie Rima, it's like they are back to square one, to which Wulan says they can start looking into their parents' past. He says he knows his dad well, and he is pretty sure her dad was not a bad person either. Only then Wulan notices someone outside, and when they come out, Asip tells her that guy has been hanging around for a while now. Now as they begin moving towards him, he rides away there on his bike, but Wulan manages to get his plate number on her phone. Later, she goes to Wisnu's room and finds him with those pills. She yells at him that their family is going through a lot right now, and they should be dealing with this with clear minds and not under the influence. She takes his box of pills with her, but after she leaves, Wisnu takes out some more pills under his mattress and eats them. The next day, Wisnu sees Haran going towards Astuti's room with a sickle, but Wisnu goes to confront him, he finds no sickle in his hand and begins hitting him. Suddenly Haran turns demonic, but it seems Wisnu was hallucinating, and he tells him that this is all because of him. Meanwhile, Asip tells Wulan that the guy from last night is here to meet her. Wulan goes to meet him, and he tells her that he is Ridho, Ahmad's acquaintance. He tells her to call Ahmad out, to which she tells him that he is dead. Ridho gets shocked to hear this, and only then do they hear Wisnu yelling at Haran. Asep and Wulan rush there, and they try to stop Wisnu, but Wisnu tells them that he tried to hurt Mom, and shows them his hand saying he slit his own hand and smeared the blood there. Wulan tells him that there is nothing, and Wisnu gets shocked to see this. She tells Asep to take Haran to the hospital, and then she finds that Wisnu is still taking those pills. Now when she comes out, Ridho has left already. Later that night, she tells Essa about Ridho, and that he was shocked and scared when she told him that her dad passed away. Essa shows her some papers and tells her that Muhammad Ridho is neither an employee nor a family, but his dad has been transferring money to him every month. He suspects he has been blackmailing his dad, and most likely her dad too. They then check that video, and Wulan recognizes him in it. Essa says he thinks he saw a copy of his ID in dad's files. They have to go see him, as he is sure he knows something about their father's death. Wulan says she thinks she needs to stay home for now, as mom hasn't fully recovered. She tells him that Wisnu accused Haran of casting curses on mom and was beating him today. He asks her if she is okay with him meeting Ridho by himself, to which she says yes. Meanwhile, Ridho finds two men misbehaving with his daughter Attic in a store, and he beats them up. They apologize to him and to Attic, and then they run away from there. Later, he tells Attic that she is getting much better at reciting the Quran. She tells him that he has been coughing for two weeks and asks him to go to the doctor tomorrow, but he says he will be fine soon. He tells her that he is trying to get more money to pay for her college tuition fee again. Later, Essa visits Ridho's house, and he tells him he is Bondin's son. Ridho asks him what does he want, to which he tells him that his father passed away recently and that he died unnaturally. He checked his bank account and saw that he sent him money on a regular basis and asks him what was it for. Ridho asks him to leave and never bothers him again and shuts the door on his face. Now while Essa is leaving, Attic stops him and tells him that she wants to talk to him for a second. Essa tells her that his father and his friend died almost around the same time, and they both died in such unnatural ways, so he has been tracking down clues, and one of them led to her father. Attic tells him that her father told her that he works for a man named Bondin, but he never told her what kind of work. Only then her dad calls her, and after talking to him, she tells Essa that she has to leave now, and before leaving, they exchange their phone numbers. Meanwhile, Wulan starts searching for all the pills in Wisnu's room which makes him angry and they start a fight, in which their family photo falls and breaks. Only then a studi comes there and tells them to stop. She then picks up that photo and tells them to let the frame be broken, but not their family. She tells them no matter what happens, they have to be strong and stick together. The next day, Attic tries to talk to Ridho about Bondin, but he tells her to stop asking such questions. Only then he chokes and begins coughing, and they notice that he spit blood. Attic says let's take him to the doctor, to which he says he is okay and asks her to go to work. 
Meanwhile, Essa talks to Wulan and tells her that it will be easier to get info from Ridho's daughter as he notices she is worried about her father. After she disconnects the call, she gets terrified seeing a cockroach in her coffee. Astuti asks her why did she spill it, to which she says she just knocked it over. Later that night, Wisnu finds Harun in his mom's room, so he angrily rushes to him and asks him what he is doing here. However, it turns out he is actually strangling Wulan, and she gets up and slaps him for his action. Wisnu tells her he swears he saw Harun, and then he leaves there confused. The next day, Wulan apologizes to Harun on behalf of her family, especially Wisnu, and Asep tells him to try to forget that it ever happened and let's leave it behind them. He says he understands that Wisnu has just lost his father, so it's normal to be upset. Before leaving, he gives her Astuti's favorite flowers and requests her to give them to her. Later, Wisnu hears a loud thud from the top of his room, and he gets shocked to see Harun standing outside Astuti's room with those flowers in his hand. He then sees him going into Astuti's room, so he rushes to her room and starts looking for him. Astuti asks him what he is doing, to which he says he saw Harun leaving something in here. Wulan asks him what's wrong with him, to which he says he saw Harun put rotten flowers here, and there must be a knot in it. Wulan tells him Harun hasn't come to work since he beat him up, and then she leaves there. Later that night, Astuti begins choking, and she throws up blood and finds cockroaches in it. She gets terrified seeing it and then her head begins hurting. Her hand then goes out of control and make her pick up a scissor and stab in her ear. Wulan wakes up hearing her scream and she gets terrified seeing her injured and covered with blood. Wulan does not understand what to do and we see cockroaches coming out of Astuti's head and nose and she dies there. Later, we see the flowers withering and Harun knows Attic and Ridho and she calls him Uncle Manto. 